Hey everybody, this is Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the Xperia Z2. No, this is not the Xperia Z2, this is the Oppo Find 7a, I'm just keeping it aside for some notes that I have taken. So the Xperia Z2 is just notoriously difficult for me right now to get a hand on because it's very, very expensive and my Sony contact failed me. They were supposed to send me one, but they didn't. And I don't feel like going and paying $1,000 right now from Amazon or about $900, $800 on eBay to get one. And I know this shouldn't be sounding like complaining because I know that in other countries it really does cost that amount of money, but hey, I'm using it for work, so give me a break. In case some of you didn't know, I buy a lot of my devices. Once in a while when I get lucky, I will be sent a device to look at and then I have to usually send it back. But just because I don't have the device in hand right now doesn't mean that I can't talk about it. And one thing that I really wanted to talk about is the display because I think that Sony did a really good job stepping up the display. As a lot of you know, the Xperia Z1, the Xperia Z had the worst viewing angles possible. It was just the most pathetic display that you could see on a smartphone. Head on, it looked beautiful. It looked really nice head on, but as soon as you put it at any angle, it looked terrible and people made excuses that, oh, for privacy, shh, I'm filming. People said, oh, for privacy reasons, it's okay if it looks weird from different angles because then another person beside me can't look at it but I think that's just because people were trying to make themselves feel better inside. So finally, they have a nice display, an IPS display, good viewing angles. So also, they used to have this shatterproof sheet. It was a film that went on the display that looked like a screen protector, pretty much. It went on factory installed. It was not meant to come off. So what would happen is that it would get scratched up, the oleophobic layer on it would eventually rub off. Only after a month of having the Xperia Z Ultra, the oleophobic layer just was completely gone. So when you would try to remove it, sometimes it would come quietly and it would come off in a sheet, but underneath there would be no oleophobic layer anymore, and it made the glass kind of feel tacky. It would remove the Sony logo, and on the Z Ultra, if you tried taking it off, it would not come in one piece. It would come off in pieces, and it just would flake off and just ruined the device. So finally, they got a clue and they got rid of that sheet. So I really wanted to thank my fiance Francois for letting me use some of his measurements of the Z2 in video. So let's go ahead and do some comparisons. So here we have arrived at my laptop. This is where all the editing magic happens. I decided to show you on here because I've got a pointer. This is very, very helpful. And I've got a lot of diagrams to show you. So, so like I said, I'm impressed with the display on the Z2 because the viewing angles are a lot better. Finally, Sony is stepping it up. But also the display shows a very large range of colors or a gamut, has a wide gamut. This is a previous video that I showed and I kind of debunked Sony showing that their Z Ultra didn't have as wide of a color range as they claimed and that it had a lot more to do with the processing of the colors, but now it looks like they're telling the truth. So what we have here is a CIE diagram. All these colors represent the range of colors that your eye is able to see. This smaller triangle is like a standard LCD. There are no labels on here, so I think they're representing sRGB or standard RGB gamut. And they're saying that this is the range of colors that their display is able to show, or the triluminous display. Normally, when we think of displays that show a lot of colors, that would be AMOLED displays, like what we have on the Galaxy S5, but Sony is able to do that on mobile displays now as well, and I'm actually impressed. So check this out. This program is called HCFR, and thank you again, Francois, for letting me use your measurements of the Z2. So right here, we have the range of colors that the Z2 is able to produce, and we have the range of colors right here that the S5 is able to produce. They look very similar, don't they, in the range of colors that they can show. They're both extending outside of that standard RGB triangle. You can see that the S5 is a little bit more shifted towards the blues than is on the Z2, which has a lot more inside the violets. But this is something that was very interesting for me to see. So here you can see why this is interesting. This is the Oppo Find 7A. It meets that standard RGB triangle. And then we have the Z2 right next to it, whose gamut is a lot wider. So they're not lying at all. They actually are being truthful here. Even against something like the HTC One M8, you can see that it's a little bit outside of the standard RGB triangle, but still, the Z2 really does go head on with AMOLED displays. And now we're presented with the truth of the Z Ultra. They claim that it had a very wide gamut, but look at this. It's a little bit wider, but not something significant. 
And when looking at the Z2, you can see they've made a pretty big improvement. So Sony is calling this triluminous display for mobile with new live color LED. And so what they claim to be doing is using a blue LED backlight. The backlight is what shines through. That's what lets you see light from the display. And then they say they're using red and green phosphor. So they're able to excite the red and green phosphor and it emits green and red light, also blue from the LED. And because the red, green, and blue light is more or less very pure, it's able to make a wide gamut because the more pure the red, green, and blue, the wider the gamut is going to be. If you have reds that are kind of orangey or greens that are kind of yellowish, you get a smaller gamut. So they put the red, green, and blue through color filters, custom color filters, and voila. So this is definitely pretty cool, but having a wide range of colors in itself doesn't make the display the best display. So gamma is something that you really need to pay attention to. This is something that a lot of manufacturers kind of seem to disregard. So here we have an image of me and Francois. So if you have a gamma that's too high, you can see that the image becomes a lot darker. Also, it makes the colors more saturated. And if you have a gamma that's too low, you end up getting an image that looks washed out or colors that are too light. So here we have the Z2 and the Z Ultra. And the Gamma 2.2 line is a really good place for the Gamma to be. The image should look normal. So Sony did a really good job with the Gamma on the Z2. But if you look at the Z Ultra, you have Gamma that goes too high. So you get areas of an image that are too dark and it also saturates colors. And then you have areas such as people's faces that look too light. They're able to make colors look really punchy. In some images it looks nice, in some videos it looks nice, but it's definitely not accurate. And now we are looking at the Galaxy S5. You can see that the overall gamma is much higher. Now, as I showed you, tweaking the gamma and making it higher can make an image look more saturated or punchy. But the problem that I have with doing that on an AMOLED display or a display that already shows a very large range of colors, it kind of makes things look too oversaturated. Now, a lot of people do really like punchy colors, but it's sometimes not the best thing. So looking at the HTC One M8, you can see that with the gamma, it looks pretty similar to what they were doing on the Z Ultra. It's got this S shape. So it makes the areas in darker shades or shadows dark. And then it takes the lighter colors and makes them pop more. It really makes a contrast between the light parts of an image and the darker parts of an image. So it is interesting and it does create an experience, but it's not the best calibration. So right out of the factory, the calibration seems to be the best on the Z2, but even everything I showed you right here doesn't take everything into account. We also need to pay attention to color accuracy because if the colors look like poo, it's not really gonna matter how gamma is calibrated. The display just may not look right. So what I'm going to do now is take the CIE diagram for the Z2 out of UV mode and I want to talk about the saturations in terms of color accuracy, but before I do that, I want to mention something. This inner triangle is called sRGB gamut. Now sRGB gamut is everywhere. It's the range of colors that the internet is meant to show, internet content. It's the range of colors that your Android device is meant to show. It's the range of colors that even Windows operating system is meant to show. So if you take sRGB content and you stretch it to fit a wide gamut display like this, what that ends up essentially doing is making the colors look oversaturated. Sometimes it looks nice, but other times it just looks off. So what stinks about Android right now as an operating system is that it does not support color management. So in the most basic terms with color management, we'd be able to take these saturation dots and we'd be able to push them back where they're supposed to be so that the colors would look right. And this is something that needs to be built into the operating system. It's not just something that we can tweak here and there. It really makes me sad right now that we have color management on computers, but we don't have it on mobile devices. We use a lot of mobile devices these days. It's about time someone does color management with Android. So in an ideal world, the saturations for sRGB content should look like what we have on the Nexus 5. They did a pretty good job with the color accuracy. You see that they're within the sRGB gamut. They're in a straight line and the saturations are evenly spaced. I do have to praise Sony though for trying to compensate for the wide gamut, especially in greens. They're trying to desaturate instead of pushing up the saturation. 
Samsung does the exact opposite with a wide gamut display. Not only are they boosting the gamma to get the saturations higher, they oversaturate the colors as well. Let's go ahead and show you this one. It's a little bit easier to see, but you can see that they're pushing reds further than they're supposed to be. So they're oversaturating the reds. They're doing the same thing with the magentas. They do the same thing with the blues. So Samsung displays can look kind of garish and really overwhelmingly saturated, but some people like that. And before you get all high and mighty about the cinema mode saying that it is accurate, I want to show you that it still extends outside of the sRGB triangle. They are also achieving some desired effect as saturation increases. You can see as they increase the saturation, the color is changing a bit instead of being in a straight line. I can't explain why they do this, but it's not accurate. So this puts cinema mode accuracy to rest. If you like it, great, but you can see right here in front of your face that whoever says that it's a good, accurate, color accurate mode just doesn't know what they're talking about. And then on the HTC One M8, HTC kind of goes trigger happy with messing around with the colors. I don't even want to speculate as to why they're doing what they're doing. And if you want to know what the HTC One M8 looks like in real life, it kind of looks like derp. I don't even know what this color is anymore for yellow. You can see it's really tweaked. Honestly, the worst thing when watching videos or looking at pictures is that skin tones just don't look right. So even though it's not accurate, it's still up to your own opinion if you like it or not. And to relieve any favoritism, even though I'm happy that Sony isn't going wacko crazy with the overall calibration, they still fail in a interesting area. So factory calibration is not what I would call horrendous, but then they go and they add something that's called the X reality engine. So when you turn the X reality engine on, all colors kind of just go to hell. I noticed that the X reality engine does not affect the UI. So in general use of the phone, it's not really so noticeable. It's noticeable in pictures and in video. So if you turn off X reality engine, the saturations become a little bit more tame. The colors are a little bit more tame. So I'm incredibly excited about this new display technology. We just really need to have color management to adjust one color space to another so that things don't look completely crazy. But thanks Sony for at least trying to undersaturate a tiny bit. So that is really all I've got to say. I want to thank everybody for watching. This has been Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to put a link in the description for Google Plus because I put a lot of posts out there now. So when I'm not making videos, I tend to like to put updates on Google Plus. You can interact with me there. So I have shown you a lot of measurements. They're all based on color theory. They're accurate. So they're not open to interpretation, but I realize that people still have opinions about these displays, so I would like to hear them. You're free to tell me which one is your favorite according to your own experiences. Which device do you like? Now that you've seen for yourself what the accuracy really is and what it means, I'd be really curious to see your responses. So have a good day, everyone.